Right, this is question four. ABCD is a rectangle inscribed in a circle with centre zero. So ABCD, if you recall, would be a cyclic quadrilateral. That could be relevant to our discussions. But anyway, there it is, ABCDE. O is the centre, which means that OA and OB and OD and OC are all radii. And it says that at the centre produces radii of eight centimetres. So let's just label up then. So that is eight centimetres. That is also eight centimetres. And I'm told that AD is 11 centimetres. Right, very, very good. I've got to calculate angle ABD. I want that. Well, look, very difficult. I've got an 8 there, an 8 there. Even if I was to drop a perpendicular straight down, I don't have enough information to calculate uh, AB at all. So I'm going to have to work with what I've got. So let's just take a look. I want the angle ABD eventually. Um, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. That is 8. That is also 8 centimetres. And I have got, therefore, um, if you like, a hypotenuse, which is, which is um, BD. And I've got a, a length AD, which is 11 centimetres. Now, let me prove to you why that must be the hypotenuse. This is, this is the essential part, this is a diameter. I know that because B, um, BD or DB passes through the centre. And you know that uh, an angle at the circumference when drawn from the centre, as opposed to an arc, you should know this, is always 90 degrees. Now look, that is a 90 degree angle based upon your knowledge of circle theorems. All right? That's a nice thick 90 degree angle. So therefore, what I've in fact got, if I try and redraw it over here in red, I've got a triangle that looks like that, like that, and like that. This is just to demystify it for you. Uh, forgive me for that one. I've got 90 degrees there. I've got 11 centimeters there. And the 8 plus the 8, which is the dB, is 16 centimeters. And of course, A is sitting there at the 90 degree angle mark. So I want angle A, B, D, that one. So let's just look at it. What have I got? I've got the hypotenuse and I've got the length opposite 8 which is of course the opposite so that's the op and this is the longest side opposite the 90 degree angle and that's called the hype so there it goes I've got op and hype and therefore it's sine it's sine of the angle a b d a b d so b is where it's where it's at all right so very simply I can now work in yellow in the darker zone here so sine of angle a b D, there's nothing wrong with writing it like this, is defined as the opposite length over the hypotenuse, the big length, which is 60. And uh, I'll do this one fully since it's a standalone question. So 11 divided by 16, that comes to 0 0.6875. So that's it's a terminating decimal. Therefore, angle A, B, D. It's going to be whatever the shift sign of that is. I'm just going to talk to my calculator and go shift sign. See, shift sign means you give me the angle, please. Press equals. I've got 43.4 degrees. And I'm very confident with that one. 43.4 degrees. That's that. Beautiful. Next one. Question. Right. Question five. It's a bearing question. No matter. Watch it. A ship sails 12 kilometers due east. If we're talking bearings here, let's construct it as a bearing, shall we? So let's just start again. It's only a picture. So that's my north line, and this is me going due east. Is that fair enough? Let me just fill it out a little bit. So that's north, and due east means 90 degrees, and I'm going 12 kilometers due east. So that's 12 kilometers so far. And then it goes 8 kilometers due south. Well, if we're talking about bearings now, let's just put another north line in for completeness. And now I'm going due south. That means straight down. So here I go. So that's a north line. And 8 kilometers. I know it doesn't look like, I know it looks longer than the 12. It doesn't matter. It's 8 kilometers due south. And it then sails straight back to the starting point. In other words, I'm here. 
and I want to go over there now from my picture. On what bearing does it sail back? Now look, bearings are always relative to the north line, so therefore I must do this. Here's my north line, and I've got to calculate that angle there using trigonometry. Uh, no problem. I can't do it directly, but I can work out this part of the angle here. Why is that? Because this angle here, call it x for now, has an opposite of 12, and it has an adjacent of 8, and you know that adjacent and opposite together make tangent of the angle. So let me do my calculation in yellow up here. So tangent of the angle x, remember x is not my bearing yet, but I need to work out angle x. So the tangent of angle x degrees is going to be op all over aj 8. So I'll probably write this one out as well. So 12 divided by 8, because it's a standalone question, it's exactly 1.5. So the tangent of the angle I want is 1.5. Therefore, the angle I want, x, is going to be shift tan of that. So shift and tan is what I've done there. Press equals, and I've got 56.3 degrees. So I've got 56.3 degrees is my is my angle x. But look, x isn't the bearing. The bearing is going to be all the way around here going clockwise. Therefore, it's going to be 360, take away my 56.3. Therefore, bearing is going to be 360 degrees, take away the 56.3 degrees, and that will give me an answer in a minute of something. 303.7. Okay, then, so 3. 3.7 degrees is my answer. Well, that's the bearing to sail back home then. How far is the total journey? Now, okay, I can work out this length using trigonometry because now I have an angle here, x of 56.3. I don't want to do that. Look, I've gone due east and I'm going due south. Guess what? This is a right angle triangle. Therefore, I'm going to use Pythagoras to do that little bit. Why shouldn't I use it? In the exam, there's nothing to say, oh, this is a trigonometry question, therefore you must do trigonometry. That's rubbish. You do what you have to do to get it right. So this is the longest side. It's, it's the hypotenuse of the op and the ag. Look, it's the longest side. So straightforward, isn't it? So this length is going to be 12 squared plus 8 squared. Remember, we're adding the squares, the two shortest sides. Then we're going to press the square root button. Do it in one step. That's 144, because I know that one, plus 64, 8 takes 64, equals 208. Now I'm going to press the square root button, and not worry about it. 14.4 kilometers, so that's 14.4 kilometers. Question, how far is the total journey? I do it up here in blue. I went 12 kilometers, I did 8 kilometers, I did 14.4 kilometers, using Pythagoras there. What have I got together? I've got um, 12 and 8, 20, and um, 34.4 kilometers journey. All right, is that all right? I really enjoyed that question. A bit of trig, a bit of the old Pythag, and that's the end of it. Stunningly beautiful. And that's how you use sine, cos, and tan, and Pythag in the context of a bearing question. I think I've just got question 60 on the other page, and then we'll call it a day. Right, I only did this because I like the pictures. Um, this is question six. It is so boringly easy. Um, on page 274, it says a train is climbing a hill with a gradient of 1 in 14. In other words, every time you, you go up a metre, you've got to travel 14 metres across to do it. Calculate the angle of elevation. All that means is the angle at which the train is poking up. In other words, that angle right there. So this is what I want. I want this angle right here calculated. Well, there it is. Well, I've got the op and I've got the ag. That's tan. So let's just do it quickly then, in blue, it's going to fit here. So the tangent of angle x, the angle of elevation, just label it x there, is going to be op over hype, sorry, op over ag, which is 1 over 14, which equals a horrible big number, I'm sure. So 1 divide 14 equals, yeah, it's nasty, it doesn't terminate. Let's just write some of it down anyway. So 0.0714 two and off it goes and uh, therefore the angle itself is has to be shift tanned so shift and tan okay that's the important bit press equals 
What's that? Oh, it's a 4.1 degree climb. Obviously, it can't be too steep. It won't make it, will it? So 4.1 degrees is the angle of elevation. 4.1 degrees angle of elevation. Now, when the gradient is measured, it's a lot easier to measure the distance along the surface rather than trying to go horizontal like that. Um, the real measurements taken are shown. So in other words, the height is now 14 and the op is now 1. So calculate the new angle of elevation. So what's the angle of elevation? It's that angle right there. Um, we can call that x as well or something similar. Work over in blue. So opposite and hypotenuse, op and hype. Let's just label it for you in case you've forgotten. That's op. That's hype. And um, that means we're playing with sine because op and hype is sine. So no longer tangent, but the sine of mystery angle of elevation is going to be the opposite side, 1 over 14, which is going to be still 0 0.0712, etc. But this time we're going to go shift sine and not shift tan. So let's just whacking the 1 divided by 14 again. Yep, same answer, of course it is. Now we're going to go shift sine and bam, what have we got? 4.1 degrees, 4.09. Well, it hardly made a difference, did it? So I'm still going to call it 4.1 degrees. Not because shift signing and shift tanning is the same. No, it's not. It's just that the angles are so close together, there's very little difference in it. Um, let me give a, a fuller answer, just in case the answer gets all silly with this. So that's 4.096 degrees. I think I'll do this one again. So 1 divided by 14 equals... I'm just going to shift tan it and see what we get. Um, this one's actually 4.08, oh, not, not 4 4.06, 4 one decimal place. There's very little difference in it, all right? So there you go. Um, but just in case you're thinking, well, how'd you get the same answer? The truth is, I didn't. I just rounded it to 1dp. I thought it was sensible. It's only an angle, for goodness sake. And so that's what I've done. And now I'm going to stop and have a cup of tea, and I might do some more later. If not, well, catch you when I catch you. Your job is to study and have fun.